Whether you're looking to get past the edit page and try some fancier things in Resolve, or if you're brand new to Resolve, this video is for you. Welcome back to the channel, my friend. This is Creator Reality, and today we're gonna look at the edit, color, and fusion pages of DaVinci Resolve 19, and I'm going to attempt to make it make sense for you. I get this question a lot, and I've seen several comments already on this channel. John, how do you know how to connect things in Fusion? Or how do you know how to do a few things in the color tab? And for those that are new, we're gonna start with a blank timeline and go from there. So I hope you enjoy this video. Let's get into Resolve and take a look at what we're working with. Here we are in Resolve and we need some footage to play with. So we're just gonna grab a file and drag it right over into Master here. And we don't wanna change our frame rate, it's fine but now we have a clip to play with. So we're gonna drag that straight down into blank space. It'll create a timeline. And if you find yourself making timelines with the same settings over and over and over, I recommend this video for setting up Fairlight presets for your timeline so that you can create them quicker and they have all your tracks, your audio tracks set up, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, let's get back to it. Now we don't need the audio, so I'm gonna hold Alt and click on the audio track and backspace to get rid of it. And then I'm gonna Alt mouse wheel to zoom out and we've got a clip and I'm standing by my bike. All right, now the first thing to take note of is if I go to effects and I go to effects, I can grab an adjustment clip and we'll zoom in on that, alt mouse wheel. And I'm gonna add an effect here. So I'm gonna go down to open effects filters. And if you don't see this effects, click it up here, it'll show it. And we're gonna come down to drone overlay. I think this is a studio only, but it proves a point. What we see here is an overlay that is transparent. If I press the D key after clicking on my clip here, it disables it. And now you see just this transparent overlay. So remember, everything in the higher video tracks affects everything underneath of it. But if you have a clip that has no transparency and we drag that up, now you don't see the drone overlay. The drone overlay has to be on top. So anything with a transparency affects everything beneath it. So now you can get started in the edit page, right? That was fairly simple. Let's move on to the color tab and take a look at how it works. Click on the color page icon and it brings us here. We have a viewer on the left. We have our node tree right here in the middle and then we've got effects on the right. So first thing we need to do is get rid of effects so we have more room to work with. And this is a node. And now if I click on our node and press Alt S, it creates a serial node, see how it's connected? You always start with an input, you end with an output, and all the nodes in the middle do things. And every node, and we'll just create a bunch of them with Alt S here, every node affects everything after it. So if I go into node one and I change the contrast and I bring it down, notice it affects everything else in the, in the line here. If I go to node three and I bring the contrast back up, it restores it, see? So we'll control Z to undo both of those and we can undo <laughs> all that. So now that you see how the node tree works, let's see how it's all connected. You always start with the input. I mentioned that, but you have blue inputs and outputs on each node. And those are for transparency. So for an example, if we go and open our effects and we add the depth map to our first node and then we go click on our second node and we type in lens and we add a lens blur. And then we take this and say better, invert, turn off the preview. Now what we need to do, you see this is all blurry. What we need to do is connect the output of our alpha here to the input of node two. So when I go full screen, you can see we've got sharp here and blurry and it gets blurrier and blurrier the further away it gets. That's just a quick example to show how these all work. So. Moving on, let's go over to the Fusion page, which is where most of the comments originate from. That was redundant. Let's move on. So to demonstrate Fusion, I've brought in a second clip and we're going to right click on it and say new Fusion clip. And then we're gonna right click on that and say open in Fusion page. Now we start with media in one and media out one and they're connected. You always start with a media in one or a background, something like that. But you'll notice this blue triangle, if I highlight it, it says media in one dot effect mask. Just hover your mouse cursor over and it'll tell you media in one dot output. So we can get rid of background one 
and we can press shift space bar and we'll add a planar tracker, which is something I've done a video on. Now we have green, white, and blue. Green is corner pin one. And then we have an occlusion mask and an effect mask. And knowing what to connect is probably the biggest question I get and how to connect them. Well, any object that you have, you can connect to the corner pin mask. And then without tracking anything, if I change this to corner pin, it's going to be blank for a second. But once I click on text one and type in something like this, subtle, I know, right? Now the text shows up. Let's blow that up. We'll drag our size way up. And you can see subscribe is now big. So if I were to track this across the scene, subscribe would follow that windshield or whatever I tracked. Now getting rid of both of those, when you have a merge node, which is another big time thing that we have, and if you drag a node, by the way, and you hold shift, you'll see a blue and yellow line, and you let go of your mouse cursor, now it's in line. So if I control Z to undo that, I move it around, it's not in line, right? But then I hold shift, and now it's in line. Yay, look at that, ooh. So now it's going to be active in what in our node tree. Now, the node trees in Fusion work very similar to the way they do in the color tab. Start, end, everything in the middle, everything affects everything downward of that or downstream of that. For merge though, it's a little different because the yellow one is gonna be your background and the green one is your foreground. Pro tip, hold control and press T to flop them or flip them. See, you've got green and yellows up here now. So if I bring in a text node, and we'll type in hi there, and I drag that to the yellow node, you can see clearly yellow is going to be our background and green is gonna be the foreground. So if I click merge one again, press control T, now they've switched. So now this is the background and this is the foreground. And you can see how that works based on what we're doing here. Because now the text one is in the background, see it's yellow again. It's invisible, but when it's the foreground, it's right there. Let's blow that up. There you go. And this works with transparency as well. So if I click on merge one and I shift space bar and I type in transform, now we have another mask, but we, we can ignore that one. But if I wanna change the size down, you can see this checkerboard pattern here. That's gonna be transparent. So that's our alpha channel. Now, if I were to hold shift with merge one selected and remove it, and bring it back down here at the end and then drag in our text. Now you can see that the transform only applies to our media in one, which I, if I click on and press one, comes up in the left viewer, it's our background footage. So if we come back to our edit tab, you can see that high there just stretches well past the background footage. And then you still have the transparency over our original clip. Now, the next follow-up question or the next most common question I get is, how do you know what effects to use to accomplish a task short of going on YouTube and watching a video? Well, let's dive into Fusion and I'm gonna show you how I try to find new effects and ways of doing things. So we're back in our Fusion clip and I'm going to click on Merge 1, press Shift Spacebar, and it brings up the Select tool. And there are a lot of them. I mean, look at all this. And if I want to do something with uh, lens distortion, I would type in distort. And there's lens distort, lens distortion, vector distortion. There's a whole bunch of them. If I want something that has to do with lenses, I'll just type in lens. And now I get all the lens things. If I want to track something, I'll type in track. And then I can click add. And here it is. So now we've got the new intelligent tracker. And we can move that around. And if I control mouse wheel zoom in, you can see that it's tracking here and I can click and move it around, control mouse wheel to zoom back out, and then I could track something. And here again, we have a foreground and we have an effect mask. So you can track things and avoid things and drag in something to move with it. So if I disconnect text one and I move it to tracker one, and then I go into operation, change it to match move, you can see that hi there is right there. So now hopefully you have a little bit less fusion confusion and color confusion and edit confusion. 
I see these questions asked a lot and hopefully I've answered them. If I haven't, or there's something I left out or you need further explanation, please feel free to leave a comment below. I respond to all my comments in a timely manner, as timely as I can be. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please boop the like button and share it with your friends. Maybe they want to learn how to edit too. Until next time, check out this video that YouTube has finally curated for you. And I hope you're having a great day. Take care.